With boundless love, Supreme Master Ching Hai sets aside her precious time and demonstrates a few simple and aesthetically appetizing dishes in loving memory of her mother and occasion of the Moon Festival. With heartfelt gratitude, we sincerely thank Supreme Master Ching Hai for sharing with us these wonderful vegan dishes and easy cooking tips. Today, we joyfully present Supreme Master Ching Hai's traditional Alaxis or Vietnamese pudding, raw salad with min soyonnaise sauce, fried vegan shrimp wrapped in rice paper, crispy vegan meatballs, and french fries, part one of three. We're making some traditional Vietnamese pudding. That my mother used to cook for me. We need just uh, some uh, glutinous rice. Some call it sticky rice. It's uh, similar to the normal rice that we eat. It's just uh, more fragrant. And uh, when you cook, it becomes a uh, sticky substance. And we also need some black beans. Some people call it black soya. So we have one cup of this black beans and we have to soak it overnight. It's the best. Otherwise, it takes longer to cook. So if we soak it overnight, also the goodness of the beans will all come out. Also, it saves a lot of cooking time. So one cup of this. You put it in a bowl and you soak it overnight. We can cover it, let it warm. Mm -hmm. The trick is you can uh, put uh, water in like a little first. And if you see it's too thick when it's cooked, then you can add a little bit more water. We can always add more. It's better to put in less first. Like every other dish, we can add it in slowly. And stir it up a little bit in the beginning so that the rice doesn't stick to the bottom. After about half an hour, you have to check also to see if it's okay already. Sometimes uh, half an hour, 40 minutes would be good enough. It depends on your cooker and how fast you cook it. Can you wash the salad? This is a filter water, you yeah? You buy the filter in the supermarket. You install it on your tap and you have filter water to drink. You can drink like that already. So no need to have too much of the bottled water. It saves some plastic garbage. Plastic bottles have been the cause of suffering for much of the marine lives because they will float everywhere in the river, in the lake, and then they flow also to the ocean everywhere. And they are not biodegradable with time even. And sometimes uh, fish or other marine life, they swallow them and they cause them a lot of uh, pain and sickness. And sometimes birds also get caught in them or, or eat them and they get sick also. So please, when you go on picnic somewhere in the open, please take your bottle with you or your cans with you. Because sometimes soft drink can can be heated up in the sun and if there is some dry and uh, fine grass around it, it might even cause a fire. Or even glass bottle, when it heats it up by the sun, too heated, then it also can cause a forest fire and cigarette butt and all that uh, that is uh, harmful to the environment. Please take good care. Do not leave your litter around, but clean it up. Bring it home and dispose them accordingly. You put them in recycling bins and uh, biodegradable. You put them in a different bin, uh, for example, like that. Please take care of the environment so that we can live in a beautiful place. Not just for the animals, it's also for us. The way we uh, 
fact, we speak loudly of who we are. So, <laughs> show your best character by action. Thank you. Always stay next to your cooking stove in case something boils over. My mother cooked this on some special occasion because she's busy. She doesn't always have time to cook. And whenever she cooked it, wow, <laughs> I loved it so much. So I'm hoping to share my childhood favorite with you. Today is the day that my mother passed away. And uh, I'm cooking this uh, in uh, the memory of love for her. I hope you enjoy when you do it. And when you cook something, I think you will remember your mom, how she used to take care of you with all unconditional love. Like the way my mother did, we can never honor our parents enough. We can never love our parents enough. And uh, sometimes when we realize it, they're already gone. So enjoy your parents while they are still with you. Respect them, honor them, obey them as much as you can. I know my parents are in heaven, in the high heavens, and they're happy, but I still miss them a lot. I don't cook maybe as good as my mother did, but anyway, I share with you what she used to cook for me, okay? Even if we have grown up already, I think we still all do need parents' advice, guidance, and love. When I had my parents for a short while in Hong Kong, because they were permitted to come out to see me, for a short while, I felt like I was a child again. I was so happy. Unfortunately, I could not keep them long around me. I wish I could. The situation in the world is not always favorable for families, especially in some political situations. Politics and war sometimes have no room for family love or human love. It is sad. I do wish that one day we truly achieve permanent peace on our planet so that no family members ever have to be separated from each other again. That they can enjoy their love while the physical being is lost. I wish you had better luck than I do, meaning having your parents for a long, long, long time and enjoy their love. And I wish your parents healthy, happy, and having a very, very filial and good, virtuous children who make them proud. Enjoy your parents for me. I love them also because they are good. They are the best friends that we can have in this physical life. They are the best. Okay, today, in loving memory of my mother, 
I cook this and share this joy with you, my childhood joy. The pudding is already boiling, so we stir it a little bit so that the sticky rice and the beans will not stick at the bottom of the pot. This pot is also a non-stick pot. But still, you should steal it a little bit now and then, hey? Okay? It's good. It's boiling now, so we should turn the heat low. Medium or low, it depends on your cooker. Mm -hmm. Just don't let it boil over. It should simmer only. I let it simmer from up to 40 minutes, and then we check it out again. We should have cinnamon powder, salt, and pure brown sugar. Get it ready and put it aside here. And when it's uh, almost cooked, we can put the sugar in. Do not put the sugar in before the rice opens. The rice is uh, very hard and like a one seat, but when it cooks, it opens now. So after that, you can put the sugar in. If you put it too early, the sticky rice will not uh, be able to open that easily. Just a trick my mother told me. I'm checking it out, it's good. It's cooking well already. Remember, you can keep adding water if it's not enough. Do not put too much water in at one time. We're going to have some salad, but remember to wash them well. Soak them in salty water for three to five minutes. And rinse them several times in filter water again before we can eat, because with raw food, you should be careful. No matter what, you recite the holy names of the Buddha or Jesus. Guru Nanak, Muhammad, peace be upon him, God, then your food will be blessed <laughs> and you'll be more healthy. Remember checking our pudding, mm -hmm. it's already beginning to be sticky and the rice opens it somewhat already but not completely yet, we wait a little bit longer. That is all open. And just now you have water here, I'm going to add some more water. We have to stir it up occasionally. I'm just used to the chopstick, but you don't have to use chopstick. Put some more water in there. Remember, if you're cooking with a non-stick pan or pot, you use a soft spoon that is made for it. It's like plastic substance. And don't leave this spoon <laughs> or cooking utensil inside the boiling water because it will be bent out of shape by the heat. You use a soft uh, spoon or utensil so that we don't scratch the surface of the non-stick pot because they are also not very good for the health. Everything is useful, but we have to be careful how we use it. That's good. We let it simmer still, but occasionally we have to stir it especially now that it is already very thick and sticky. If the rice is up already. The rice, when it's open, about three sizes bigger than it is originally was, then it's okay already. Wow, it's very fragrant already. Now we have to put in the sugar, cinnamon and salt. Actually, so you could put it in earlier, but you can also put it in now. Just a pinch of it. Half a teaspoon, yeah, 
spread it around. The cinnamon, you can add it now or after when it's already cooked. I just added it now. You can add about two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. It's cooked already. Oh, wow, it's so fast. And I put in one and a half cups of sugar. There. If it's not sweet enough to your liking, you're allowed to put more sugar. Watch your weight. No, don't blame me. <laughs> you mix it all up. Ah, I have such a small pot. So I have to be very careful. Mix it up nicely and gently. Once it's uh, mixed thoroughly, you allow it to simmer for a couple more minutes and then you remove from the heat and put it in bowls ready to eat. We can either eat it hot like this or cold tomorrow or the next day even. It will last a few days. When my mother cooked this, <laughs> it never lasts long. I ate a lot of them. <laughs> you can use the two chopsticks and stir it circle-wise like this. And then uh, the, all the substances will be mixed very well together. And also your pan will not be sticking with the, the pudding at the bottom. You separate the, the chopsticks like this, yeah? And then you stir it gently and in a circle movement. And now we see if it tastes good. If it's not sweet enough, then you can add more sugar. But this was just enough already. It tastes just fine. We could even eat it also with the coconut milk. It's also wonderful. Or just like this, as is. This is cooked already. So we're going to uh, put it in a small bowl for pudding. Pudding bowl. <laughs> as big as you want. <laughs> Use this. See how sticky it is? This is when it's correct. It's almost like rice, except this is more moist. See, this is the correct consistency. It hardly can come down. <laughs> Shake it like that. You shake the bowls so that the substance becomes more uh, settled. Then it will settle at the bottom and then you have a pudding nicely. We are preparing some raw salad. Whatever vegetable you have in your fridge, that will be good. Cut them into finger size, bite size, and arrange it in a cup. I uh, have some cabbage, <laughs> just simple white cabbage. And uh, peppermint. I washed them all already. And we even have some beans here. You can uh, clean up the beans a little bit. 
Also, vegetables you can eat raw. We just prepare the beans, make it look clean, cut both ends of it. I just leave it here and I'm going to arrange it. When I'm done, some zucchini even. You can also have some beetroot. Yeah, but right now we don't have it. Simple stuff. Celery. And of course we have cucumber. Cucumber, celery, they are very, very good for the for skin, good for health, good for digestion. People even use cucumber for beauty treatment. And we also have even carrot, <laughs> all kinds. Bell pepper, tomato, and broccoli. Yes, that's right, broccoli. You can also eat raw broccoli. Of course you know that already. Yeah. And you just hope your kids know it. <laughs> and then they eat raw as well. Tell them broccoli makes them beautiful, good looking. And maybe they bite it. <laughs> Carrots also chop them into bite size. That's it. We just arrange them more in a cup. Zucchini also eat raw. You know, we can eat anything raw, almost. But check out on the internet, see what you can eat raw and what you cannot. <laughs> For the raw salad sauce, we will mix something together. We have some uh, mayonnaise, meaning <laughs> vegan mayonnaise. You can have like mayo soya, made from soya, no egg, no milk, just salt, and olive oil. You buy them in the supermarket or you make them yourself. And then you put in some of the fermented soya. You can buy them in Chinese markets. It smells like cheese. Fermented soya cube. It looks like this. And they put them in the jar and you can buy them, the whole jar. Just one piece in there. So the taste will be very, very deep. And chop some peppermint, or coriander, or dill, or petersil. Mm -hmm. I have to chop it real fine this time. You can use a machine if you want for a finer texture, but uh, I don't really like the machine too much. It makes noise. <laughs> and it uses that electricity. I just use that old fashioned style. You can also put them in the grounding instrument and ground it. But you use a knife and you chop it fine again and again and again. It's also okay. Until it's real, real fine, real fine, very, very fine. As fine as possible. And you put it in the soya mayonnaise with the fermented soya cubes. And you mix it with a little soya sauce because the mayonnaise is kind of thick. 
That's pretty good. Soy sauce in there. Let's see. Pretty good. Then you mix it. So that the fermented soya blends well with the mayonnaise, a veganess. Just use a fork to mash it together with the peppermint there. Mash it real fine, eh? Real fine, until it becomes smooth. There, it's very, very fine now. They all mixed together. All right. And you taste it. Very good. I find that raw, the vegetables taste good in themselves already. But uh, if you like it more sophisticated, you can make sauce like this, and why not? And for this sauce, I put in a pinch of brown sugar. If you like it. If you like the taste as it was, it depends on what kind of mayonnaise you have. If you don't like it, you put in a little sugar. If you like it already, there's no need. Hmm, what's better? Better, better, better. Wonderful. Oh, I like it better. You can transfer it in some fancy bowl. Some bowl. To share. This is called finger food. People share together and feel like a family. There we are. Hi, look at that. Beautiful. Hmm? If you don't have mayonnaise in your house, you can use uh, vinegar and uh, soya oil, uh, olive oil, mix them together. Hmm? I'm sure you know how. If not, you can look up on our website, yeah? SupremeMasterTV.com. They also show you how to make uh, vegan uh, mayonnaise. Veganese, okay. Ingredients. For all ingredients, please use organic versions if available. For the traditional Olac Seas or Vietnamese pudding, the ingredients are glutinous rice, water, one cup of black beans, two teaspoons of cinnamon powder, a half teaspoon of salt, one and a half cups of brown sugar, coconut milk optional. We encourage you to wear gloves when handling ready-to-eat raw foods. For the raw salad with mint soyonaise sauce, the ingredients are cabbage, green beans, cucumber, carrot, bell pepper, tomato, broccoli, celery, zucchini, peppermint, beetroot, optional, mint soyonaise sauce, vegan mayonnaise, optional, olive oil and vinegar, one fermented soya cube, peppermint finely chopped, optional, dill, coriander or parsley, pinch of brown sugar, Optional, soya sauce. Peace loving viewers, it's been a pleasure to have your company today. Please join us for part two of this three part show next Sunday, when we will continue to learn how to make fried vegan shrimp wrapped in rice paper, crispy vegan meatballs and french fries. Coming up next is Women Have to be Protected and Respected, Part 2 of 8, on Between Master and Disciples, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. May the divine light brighten your life with God's love. Vegan. Only a few wild beasts eat animals' flesh. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com.